1972, I was saved and born again in First Baptist Church in Fort Smith, Arkansas. The pastor was Dr. Bill Bennett, uh, the youth director who had a, a large part in my Christian growth, uh, Charles Collins, was there. Um, another great preacher that was there, an evangelist before Dr. Bennett, was J. Harold Smith. When I was saved in 72, the two first evangelists that I saw that came to the fellowship were Zola Levitt and Hal Lindsey. So I was raised in a church that was a soul winning church. Um, and taught that the word of God was inerrant. And because I was really born again, I knew that. Nobody can be born again and really going to heaven without knowing the word of God is inerrant. It is a letter from God. I've often said that uh, if God was not able to keep his book inerrant, then how could we have got a letter from him knowing how to be saved, the process of salvation, that God would send his only son, but yet he wasn't strong enough to make sure that the letter was not polluted, which the spirit of truth tells every believer that's just an absolute lie. God is in absolute control. Another truth that goes with knowing that the word of God is inerrant is for every born again believer that you love Israel, that the Bible is a Jewish book by Jewish authors in the Holy Ghost, that the Jews are chosen, not that they're better than other people, but they have a role to play in the salvation of the world the same way a woman has a role in a marriage to play uh, it's not the same as the husband, but it's equally as important to fulfill and bring to pass the, the great story of the redemption of the grace of God and how he loves man. Now, it wasn't long after being saved in 72 and, and hearing the word of God uh, and knowing about Israel in my heart that we should love them, uh, let alone being taught it by other men uh, that Jimmy Carter decided to have the Camp David uh, treaty with uh, Anwar Sadat and Israel. And I knew even then as a Christian that it was not a good deal because there's no peace treaty to be made. There's nothing. Only God can protect Israel. And we, we find out later on in life uh, the things that Jimmy Carter has said and done, that he was never Israel's friend to start with. He's not a born-again person. He's a religious person, but he's not a saved person. By God's grace, before he dies, he'll get that. Anything's possible with God. God is great. And so when we got to the Oslo Accords in 93, uh, and we know that Sadat was killed behind Camp David, when we got to the Oslo Accords on the White House lawn, I remember exactly where I was in 93. I was sitting in somebody's kitchen watching television with them and saw Arafat and Bill Clinton and Rabin signing uh, the Oslo Accords. And, and knowing that this was not good, that only Jesus Christ can bring that peace, and that Israel's enemies, no matter how much they smile in her face, they want her destroyed. And as the years have gone by, it's been proven over and over by the actions of the Arabs in the Middle East. But that's Bible prophecy. That's the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, God is still going to win, and God still loves the Arabs, but, you know, no matter how much a man doesn't want a woman to be a woman, a woman's going to be a woman or vice versa. That's why all this silliness in America with, you know, 
I want a sex change operation. I'm really a woman, but I was meant to be a man or a man I'm meant to be a woman. It's so silly with God. It doesn't accomplish anything. It does not change a thing. God has set the boundaries of everything and, and he says what everything is and should be. And from his judgment, how he will deal with all these issues in this life that we either hope go away or act like nobody sees. But I remember going, this won't work either at the Oslo Accords. Even Rabin, I looked at him. He seemed like a real precious man, uh, a kind man. But in the situation he was in, he was really naive. And he was not where he needed to be in the Lord, making the deal that he was making to give that land away. And uh, it wasn't long after that that one night I was sleeping at the parsonage. And at the time, uh, one of the brothers, one of the deacons lived down the hallway from me. And uh, you know how it is in the Lord. You got a brother in the Lord. You, you share a lot. You're in the word of God. Um, I had a dream uh, that night and the dream was is that I was I was going towards something very quickly in space and as I was getting closer to this thing it was becoming more and more focused all of a sudden I got close enough to realize I was seeing the Lord Jesus and the elders standing on their thrones. And when the thought hit my mind, what I saw, I was thrust back out of it as fast as I went into it. And I woke up. Now, because of what I saw, Nobody, no matter what anybody thinks about what they're hearing right now, what I thought I saw and what I saw, I jumped out of bed. I ran down the hall and I knocked on this brother's door. Brother, I need to speak to you. I need to tell you something I just dreamed. So I, I told him and he's a good brother. He loved me and everything. And yeah, okay, okay. But you know, you're trying to tell even somebody in the body of Christ. I just saw the Lord standing on the throne. Um not everybody is in their walk in the Lord where you are. But I had to tell this because I saw it. And I remember asking the brother, do you remember the passages where the Lord is standing on the throne? I could remember Isaiah 6 where he was sitting on the throne. And this other person knew the word of God well too. And it just talking about it, neither one of us did. So we went on to bed, excuse me, went on to bed that night. And the next morning, he went out and got a newspaper uh, and some donuts. When he came back and handed me the newspaper and I opened it up, on the other side of the world, when I was dreaming this dream, Rabin was being assassinated. The timing. And I told him, I said, brother, this must have been what I saw. To be so serious, assassination of the prime minister of Israel, and for me to see the Lord standing on the throne with the elders, watching this event, being involved in it some way. I know this is awful high to try to explain what I saw, but that's what, and we, as we talked, I said, man, it's got to be what that is. So uh, a couple of days later uh, was Sunday morning. Uh, I had done a lot of topical Bible study that week. And I had put notes for what I wanted to talk about Sunday and Sunday night, what I wanted to preach and teach on. So I went in. Uh, Sunday morning, and I got those passages and went out to preach because I had topical Bible studied. I had not really gone through all of the passages thoroughly. Um, 
And so only what was at the top of the list, I really remembered where I was, uh, what I was going to be covering. So that Sunday morning as I preached down through the word, all of a sudden I come to a passage in the Old Testament that the Lord stood on his throne to judge the elders of Israel, the political leaders. I was just blown away. I knew what the Lord had showed me in that dream, and I knew what I was reading. If that wasn't enough, and after church was over, uh, I got with this brother, and we both checked this out. I went back Sunday night and did the same thing in another passage in the Old Testament. The Lord stood on the throne to judge the elder, elders of Israel. Two witnesses to it, the dream and the assassination. Now, one of the things the Lord dealt with me about in the spirit and spoke to my heart was, David, if I will take the apple of my eye out, the prime minister of Israel, for dividing my land, for trying to give it away, for peace, and what will I do to those who twisted his arm behind his back to get him to do that? We know how the story goes. Many years down the road, Arafat is dead. And Bill Clinton is still living. And we know that Bill Clinton was the, the major player, the facilitator in all of this. Oslo Accords on the White House lawn. The night we elected Barack Obama to the presidency of the United States was the exact day Rafine was assassinated. Now the Jewish people celebrated in Israel a couple of days before or after because there was a conflict with other things with the Jewish nation. But the actual day he was assassinated was the evening that we elected Barack Obama to the presidency of the United States. And I heard the Lord tell me, this is the answer to the question, what will I do to those who forced Israel to sign this agreement? You want Israel to give her land away? You will give your land away. The Lord is not through with Bill Clinton. Arafat and Rabine answered, and Bill Clinton is going to answer and God is going to do it, and it's going to be obvious to everybody who walks in truth that it was God and not man who dealt with Bill Clinton. President Barack Obama, he is the answer to the question, what will I do to those who forced Israel to give their land away by peace treaties? I'm going to give them Barack Obama, and they're going to give their land away. Church, Jesus is faithful no matter where we find ourselves. In the same way, the nation of Israel will be delivered by the archangel Michael, by the power of God, the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter how bad the war is. The destruction that's coming to America, which is terrible, stacks of bodies on the sides of the street like snowdrifts. God is able to take care of his church. 
he is able to deal with the righteous and the unrighteous at the same time. The unrighteousness and the unrighteous person will receive judgment in their due time, but the righteous man shall be delivered by his faith. Keep your eyes, put your eyes on Jesus and realize he is your redeemer and he is your deliverer and cry out for the grace of God, the mercy of God, witness, time is short, tell everybody about Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, Jesus is Lord.